All right, guys. So um, there was a story that dropped the other day that didn't get nearly enough attention. So if you guys remember, a while back, maybe, I don't know, a few months ago or something, there's this woman named Cassidy Hutchinson, who was the uh, chief of staff for Mark Meadows, who, of course, is a Republican politician and was in the Trump administration and was, I think, Trump's chief of staff, right? Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Some, some similar position to that, right? So she testified in the January 6th committee and had all these bombshells that dropped. She was spilling all the tea of everything that was going on behind the scenes. And she said some things where it was huge news, big headlines, but we got news from other media outlets that there were Secret Service agents who were contesting her story and were saying, actually, no, this isn't true. This didn't happen. This isn't true. Um, and I'm willing to testify under oath that that's the case. Now, what's interesting is they said they're willing to testify under oath, but none of these Secret Service agents would give their name to the media outlets that reported this. So they were, they were making an anonymous claim that this isn't true, and I'm going to testify against it for the January 6th committee, but you can't know my name. There's a little bit of a contradiction there. If you're going to testify eventually, then why not just give your name right now to the media? So Ken Klippenstein actually sniffed this out, too. He, he, he was like, something's off here. Ken was given this scoop, too, and he's like, I'm not running that. Give me your, let me put your name in there, and then I'll run it. So anyway, now we learn, and there's a headline in Mediaite today, or from the other day. Secret Service agent Tony Ornato retires after explosive testimony from January 6th, the witness. So this guy, Tony Ornato, one of the Secret Service agents that was with Trump on January 6th, I think one of the guy who was shopping around behind the scenes to the media outlet saying, no, 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 Cassidy Hutchinson's story is not true. He just retired. Now, why would he do that? Well, the answer is simple. If he remained a Secret Service agent, he would have been compelled to testify, and he would have had to tell the truth under oath. But if he's a private citizen, they can't compel him to testify. And so now he's a private citizen, now he can't testify under oath. So the guy who was willing to, se to testify, to say Cassidy Hutchinson is wrong, all of a sudden, he ain't willing, and he ain't able, and he ain't going to do it. And he's trying to save his ass, and he retires in order to save his ass. So in other words, this is a very long way of me saying, Cassidy Hutchinson was right. She was telling the truth. She was told... She was told things and she was relaying the information. And everything that she said, she was actually told. It was a real story. It was true. And the Secret Service agents who were trying to blow up the whole thing and say, actually, no, Trump didn't do that, they just got outed as absolute liars. So, what does this mean? Well, this means we can, uh, you know, go back, take a look at what Cassidy Hutchinson said, and understand that it is either close to accurate or totally accurate. So let's watch. Just to be clear, Ms. Hutchinson, is it your understanding that the president wanted to take the mags away and said that the armed individuals were not there to hurt him? That's so mags are the, like, um, metal detectors. So Trump wanted to take the metal detectors away for the speech he was giving, given, because some people were armed. And he was like, they're not here to hurt me. Let them be armed. In other words, hey, if they want to hurt other people, do I care? Nah, not really. It's a fair assessment. I just want to confirm that that is when you heard the president say the people with weapons weren't there to hurt him and that he wanted the Secret Service to remove the magnetometers. That's correct. Mr. Cipollone said something to you like, make sure the movement to the Capitol does not happen. Is that correct? Mr. Cipollone said something to the effect of, please make sure we don't go up to the Capitol, Cassidy. Keep in touch with me. We're going to get charged with every crime imaginable if we make that movement happen. And do you remember which crimes Mr. Cipollone was concerned with? In the days leading up to the six, we had conversations about potentially obstructing justice or defrauding the electoral count. So what happened in the president's vehicle when the Secret Service told him he would not be going to the Capitol? The president said something to the effect of, I'm the effing president, take me up to the Capitol now. To which Bobby responded, sir, we have to go back to the West Wing. The president reached up towards the front of the vehicle to grab at the steering wheel. Mr. Engel grabbed his arm, said, sir, you need to take your hand off the steering wheel. We're going back to the West Wing. We're not going to the Capitol. On December 1... Now, that was the part that the Secret Service was like, no, that's not true, and I'll testify under oath that that's not true, and now the person who's going to do that is no longer a Secret Service agent and is not going to testify under oath. Cassidy was right. She was right. So, in other words, not only was Trump insistent on going to the Capitol you know, with January 6th happening, storming of the Capitol and all that shit, he was so insistent that he grabbed the fucking steering wheel and said, I'm the fucking president, take me to the Capitol. 
Now, by the way, Trump should be thanking the people who didn't let him go to the Capitol, because if he did go to the Capitol, it would be overwhelmingly more likely not only could they get him on a crime, they could get him on the highest crime imaginable. So Trump owes these people an apology and a massive gift. In 2020, Attorney General Barr said in an interview that the Department of Justice had not found evidence of widespread election fraud sufficient to change the outcome of the election. Ms. Hutchinson, how did the president react to hearing that news? I first noticed there was ketchup dripping down the wall, and there's a... The word is ketchup. It is not ketchup. Ketchup, Cassidy. Ketchup. Shattered porcelain plate on the floor. The valet had articulated that the president was extremely angry at the attorney general's AP interview and had thrown his lunch against the wall. You heard the president, Mr. Meadows, and the White House counsel discussing the hang Mike Pence chants. They're literally calling for the vice president to be effing hung. And Mark had responded something to the effect of, you heard him, Pat, he thinks Mike deserves it. He doesn't think they're doing anything wrong. As rioters chanted hang Mike Pence, the president of the United States, Donald Trump, said that, quote, Mike deserves it. As an American, I was disgusted. It was unpatriotic. It was un-American. We were watching the Capitol building get defaced over a lie. Did Rudy Giuliani ever suggest that he was interested in receiving a presidential pardon related to January 6th? He did. And Ms. Hutchison, did White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows ever indicate that he was interested in receiving a presidential pardon related to January 6th? Ms. Meadows did seek that pardon. Yes, ma'am. Now, by the way, another reason why we thought at the time, hey, Cassidy's probably telling the truth here, is because she worked for Mark Meadows. After she d gave this testimony, Mark Meadows said, bupkis, said nothing, kept totally quiet. Now, if Mark Meadows felt like she was mischaracterizing anything, Mark Meadows would have came out and said, she's lying and, you know, I'm with the president and this is slander and this isn't right. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. So in other words, all this is either... Very close to true. The reason I say very close is because it was sec it was secondhand stories that she's telling here with a lot of the stuff that was told to her, right? But it's either close to true or it's totally true. Everything that she's saying here. So, now look, what does this change? It doesn't change much other than that look at the way uh, the Secret Service lied to protect Trump. This sort of works hand in hand with that story we just covered from Ken Klippenstein a couple shows ago about how there are factions of the deep state that are bending over backwards to protect Trump. They're protecting Trump. So the DHS, Department of Homeland Security, they are not cooperating with the January 6th investigation. They are stalling as much as possible. Why? Because there are people in the DHS who are Trumpists. And so this also flies in the face of the entire right-wing narrative of like, oh, Trump's taking on the deep state and the deep state's out to get him and all that. There are definitely factions of the deep state that are not with Trump, they disagree with Trump. A lot of these guys are like big rule followers, and when Trump violates the rules, they hate that, and a lot of them, some of them are sort of loyal to Biden, right? But there's plenty of them that are loyal to Trump, and they are pulling out all the stops to try to defend him. Between the PR counteroffensive saying Cassidy's lying, now we know that's not true. Between stalling the investigation, now we know that they're doing that, and the deep state is protecting Trump. So just understand, there's a war within the deep state. And um, that also makes it difficult to get any justice on this front. But look, at the end of the day, whatever's going on here with the January 6th committee, we're going to find out, we're going to know. But even if nothing comes of the January 6th committee, you have to understand there's still a number of criminal cases in Georgia about the election. Rudy Giuliani is the subject of one of those investigations. It's about the whole fake elector scheme where they set up a, you know, a fake elector panel. Trump calling saying, find me 11,000 votes. That stuff is deeply illegal. So there's hope in Georgia, and then also there's hope with the New York cases, the civil case against Trump and his business. His CFO flipped. His CFO also is going to flip on the organization, the Trump organization. We might be talking about the corporate death penalty for Trump's business. So there's still a lot of irons on the fire, and there's a lot of evidence there. Now, final point I'll make is that old tweet is still true. I'd like to see old Donnie wriggle his way out of this one, and then he wriggles his way out of it easy. Ah, well, nevertheless, he could still get away with everything, everything. And if you get him on some low-level shit, maybe he becomes a political martyr. Maybe that helps him even more with the Republican base, right? But on, on the merits, on the merits, this stuff ain't Russiagate. It's just not. It is way more substantive.
Ever since Adpocalypse, when YouTube defunded all independent news and politics overnight, we haven't trusted them. We know they can pull the rug out from underneath us at any time. If you enjoy this content, please consider tipping a dollar or two per month on the Secular Talk Patreon. Link in the video description box below. Thanks for your support.